Alright, welcome to uh, Bulls and Reviews. This is another episode we got going on for y'all. Uh, we got Critique here. Watch your mouth. We got Mugu. What up, though? And I'm T-Roy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Today's episode is uh, Mugu's pick. This is uh, from Dust to Dawn. And um, I'm going to turn it over to my man to let him get down. Yeah, man. Dust Till Dawn, man. Classic movie. Um, this is uh, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, you also see screenplay by Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino is also one of the main actors. Uh, you got a star-studded uh, cast of stars. You know, Juliette Lewis, uh, George Clooney, uh, Kai, uh, Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you go, you can kind of go, you go in. Uh, you even got uh, Trejo, my man, uh, Danny, Danny Trejo. Trejo, Trejo. Yeah. Yep, so... Uh, oh, and can't forget the iconic no, Cheech Marin, who oh, played yeah, who played about three different characters mm -hmm. in this movie. Yeah, oh, uh, which I was, which I was, it was funny to me about that, but hey, yeah, it played it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you get a story of uh, two, uh, we'll say gangsters at this point. Right. You know what I'm saying? They trying to get to Mexico to collect their money. And along the way, they doing some, you know, scandal shit. They robbing uh, a gas station. They hijacking an RV. And they and the family in it. Um, and just like one of the guys that, uh, the guy that uh, Quentin Tarantino plays is a uh, psycho fiend type dude. Um, they, kidnap, uh, they kidnap a lady uh, from one of the um, jobs that they just did. Um, they're supposed to be holding her uh, as uh, a, a you know kidnapping victim or ransom or whatever. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's character winds up going into some old psycho shit and <laughs> fucking raping her yeah. and killing her and uh, you know classic horror movie type stuff. You know, um, George Clooney seems to be the guy who got the sense and has the uh, control or the leader, and he really kind of don't have it either. He don't have it all there either. But uh, as they um, as they uh, finish robbing uh, this, uh, I think it was a bank. Yeah. Once they finish robbing this bank, they're trying to get to Mexico to get other money from another gangster that they do, that they have dealings with. Um, they say that they're going to meet at this place. Now, the place that they meet at is called the Titty Twister. Yeah. And so, now, the Titty <laughs> Twister is uh, uh, pretty much like an oasis. It's basically a standalone building, and there's nothing else around it. And that was the whole reason they picked to uh, go there so they could mm -hmm. get the money, you know, to pick up the money from them. But the stipulation is, is that, hey, we'll see you by dawn. Mm -hmm. So, that means that well, by the time they get there, they're in the afternoon, so they got to get there, and then they got to kind of like chill out and wait until dawn in order to meet with the guy. Mm -hmm. Well, little do they know, they stumble upon, uh, a, I would say, a, van a nest of vampires. Yeah. Um, but they don't know this yet. Uh, so they hijack the RV that uh, Kytel is driving. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to ask y'all this later, because okay. there's something else about that part. But um, so... Kyteo has an uh, Asian son mm -hmm. and a white daughter, played by Julia Lewis. And I don't know who the young uh, Asian guy was. Okay. I, mean, I think he. This was like yeah, this was his first. Else. Yeah, this was like his first jump off. You know. Right. But everybody else, I think at this time in the movie, this is ninety six. A lot of firsts so, in this movie. Yeah, yeah but mm -hmm. I feel like what we need to do right now, and I didn't really do it, but I'm I'm going to do it. Go back and research the movies that they had prior to that movie, because I feel like they might have. I feel like Julia Lewis, and I feel like Kaitel, mm -hmm. and I feel like Clooney might have had some other shits oh, yeah. that was definitely. notable prior to this movie. No, yeah, definitely. See what I'm saying? Not George Clooney. So in '96, like that's when he's uh, coming up. No. That's his come up. This was George Clooney. Cartel yeah. has some hits. Harvey yeah. Cartel has some hits. George Clooney. This was his first. Um, Quentin Tarantino's first paid writing mm -hmm. uh, 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 credit and George Clooney's like first major role. See, okay. so, yeah, yeah. So 
even at this point, uh, the acting is good. Um, this is like, I would say pre-CGI. Some of it could be, but like you said, it could be practical as well. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you got vampires. And yeah. um, so they did pretty well with how they looked and then how they killed them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what happened once they killed them. But once they get across uh, the border, which was a big deal, because they mm -hmm. had to get across the border yeah. in order to get into Mexico, um, you know, they had to hide some stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, they hide in the bathroom. You got uh, Quentin Tarantino, George Clooney, hide in the bathroom with Kaitel's daughter. That's a good scene. And hold her, and hold her uh, captive and let him know, hey, look, you better not say nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. You just better say, hey, it's just you, your son, and they had to make up that the daughter was because the uh, the bath they heard some noise in the bathroom, which the police officer was also played by Cheech Mary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so mm -hmm. he hears some stuff in the bathroom. We're like, hey, we need to check it. So he was like, oh, it's my daughter. So mm -hmm. they look in the bathroom. The daughter sitting on the toilet. But long story short, they're hiding. So they wind up getting across the border. Now we get into the crux of the situation mm -hmm. where. They get to the bar. Um, George Clooney is now fate is forcing, um, you know, them to have drinks. You know, you got to drink with us, you know, this, that, and the other, or, or else. So they wind up having the drinks. The night is going by, you know. it's uh, So the Titty Twister is basically a, a gentleman's bar. So you got women dancing on tables. Well, they got yeah, white boy. pussy, black pussy, <laughs> yeah. green pussy, I white, white pussy, pussy, smelling pussy, old pussy, snapping pussy. <laughs> and if, if it's some pussy that we don't got it, you don't want it. <laughs> so that's like one She's of the biggest things. Man, man. So that was like one of the biggest things, the introduction to the actual bar. So yeah. they get in there, they sit down. As time passes... Time goes by, everybody's having a good time. Now, as time goes on, then you start getting the uh, changeover or transformation of a lot of those people to vampires. Mm -hmm. Now, which was, this is a funny thing to me, it's funny. Like, when they did the vampires for everybody else, it was like a whole body vampire. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, oh, Breakout scene or breakout acting movie for Salma Hayek. Yes, it was. You know, so she is one of the, mm -hmm. um, I you know like female sexual like icons in movies. Mm -hmm. um, she basically, I mean, even she to this day, she she's eighty nine years old. I still give her that work. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, Go she, ahead, I mean, she got it. Like, yeah. Pretty, Thank nice body, you. hair. Hey, you know, it's, it's there. Um, but it was funny how they did full body vampire for everybody. And then with her, her head just kept switching. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it sure did. So, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah that, it, it, it was thing. weird. It was yeah. like a weird head. It was, yeah. it was just funny to me. Uh, but that's me watching it now versus me watching it when I was younger. You know, I was younger. It's kind of like it wasn't a lot of suspense. With this movie, it was kind of like like you knew you was watching a horror movie. You knew you was kind of watching a vampire flick in a sense, but it like you kind of knew what stuff was gonna happen. It mm -hmm. wasn't like a surprise mm -hmm. outside of uh, Quentin Tarantino with the uh, with the old lady. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, outside of that, but this was kind of like one of the movies where um, you knew the gore was coming, and it was like, how are they gonna do it? And so. They, they, you know, like they put it together. So they wind up these, um, the son, Harvey Cattell's son, his daughter, and him, uh, Quentin Tarantino, and uh, George Clooney are in this um, bar. They're actually getting, uh, they're, they're about to be um, attacked by all of these vampires as they start to switch. All the ladies are there for the distraction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's enough titties out. Uh, so you ain't really paying <laughs> attention. Distracted the hell out no. of them. So you definitely know you're not, you don't know what's going to happen. So as they start to turn to vampires, it's like, whoa, what's going on? There are some other people in this uh, bar as well 
who are not with them, but they are not part of the vampire horde. Let's mm-hmm. say that. Mm-hmm. So these guys, and it's funny that these guys had the guy who had the uh, the dick and balls gun. Sex machine. Sex machine. Sex machine. I call him so. cock blaster, but <laughs> for, the sake, for the sake of the movie and and literally what his name was was Sex Machine. Sex yeah. Machine. So, but he had a concoction on his genitals mm-hmm. that flipped out. Uh, I want to say a thirty-eight because it was yeah. a revolver and it had two. It had two. Uh, re- um, Balls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the balls were two barrels. Yeah. Two, uh, yeah, two barrels. Not barrels, two revolvers. D- that was holding the bullets. Right, that was yeah. holding the bullet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And his, uh, uh, I say metaphoric, metaphorically, penis was the actual barrel of the gun, but his yeah. balls were the the uh, revolver yeah. uh, 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 mechanisms. Yeah, exactly. And his name was Sex Machine, but yeah. I think his name would have been better as Cock Blaster. <laughs> I mean, but he could have took, I man. He could have took that name right from Dust to Dawn, right to Poor. See, <laughs> go ahead. Man. Then you had, then you had another uh, cameo in this Play movie. Matt. Then you had another cameo in this movie, which is my main man, Fred Williams, man, Mister Mister uh, Caesar himself. Mr. You know? Caesar, <laughs> what? Mister Three the Hard Way. See, so. I mean, it, it was, and that's one thing I liked about this movie. Mm-hmm. It had some stuff that you wouldn't look that that you didn't know was gonna be a part of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if you a movie buff or you know some of these actors, you saw it and was like, "Wow, I didn't know he was in this movie." Mm-hmm. And it yeah. and it reminded me as well because I forgot he was in it. Yeah. Um, but again, as you as what would happen, the vampires are taking over. They trying to they they're attacking. Um, everybody's you know fighting for their life. Um, Quentin, they wind up losing Quentin Tarantino and a couple other people. Mm, yeah. Um, and the same thing with Harvey Keitel later yeah. on in the movie. Mm. He winds up getting bit. But he's able to save himself to the point where he can get back and help for the final push. Right. Um, but at the same time, they got to remember, he got bit. Mm. So he's going to change at some point. Mm-hmm. So he instructed them, hey, y'all need to kill me. Get rid of me, so I'm not holding you mm-hmm. up. So, lost. So as this keeps going, they're fighting shotguns, st- uh, stakes to the heart, um, you know, and they taking all the help that they can get. Cock blaster gets turned on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's I'm, trying, his new name, I'm trying to tell you, though. Know? Yeah, gotta be his name. So, so he wound up getting turned. Um, he winds up going against them as well. Um, yeah, he winds up end up uh, uh, being turned into a vampire. Yeah, and yeah. biting Fred Williamson. Yep, yeah. yep. and then Fred, Fred Williamson, Williamson character. Yeah, Fred Williamson gets turned into one. Uh, that's another thing where I talk about how the the wardrobe and the uh, costume design and all this other stuff. Mm. So how he looked, like I feel like they just made him, like I felt like they made him like a Frankenstein vampire. Like he wasn't, like he wasn't. Like Dracula, Dracula 2000. Yeah, mm. he wasn't moving fast and in the shadows. Yeah, yeah, he just yeah. was walking around yeah. and just with the face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they had to fight him and they wound up overcoming him as well. Um, and so at this point, they're trying to, again, they're just trying to get out of there. They're trying to make it to dawn to mm. get out of there. Yeah. And um, so as that story keeps playing out, they actually wind up getting out of there but dwindled numbers. So mm-hmm. the main people who are left is uh, George Clooney, Juliette Lewis, yeah. and there was one other person. I with think them. that was it. The two that got outside, but yeah, yeah. to get to oh, but uh, right before the Marines of the character. Yep, yeah, yeah, Carlos. I yep, think. Carlos. Yeah. So outside of that, um, again, this movie, pretty a uh, lot of action going on, a mm-hmm. lot of twists and turns. Um, I definitely get this movie uh, three quarters of a cup. Okay. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, not really into horror movies, but when they add the stories uh, that you know kind of make the story work with that, then I you know I can fuck with it. But it's kind of like when they go to like the like senseless kill, like it doesn't like. Like Freddie had a sense of what was why he was doing what he was doing. Okay. Versus somebody who don't know what they're doing. They just 
I'm, you know, I'm just taken over by the spirit and I'm just going to kill people. Okay. But I like that this had a story and that they were trying to, you know, make it to the end. And I, you know, and that's another thing. I probably would have beat up my man at the end, which who was played by Cheech Marion at the end. Well, you too. remember uh, George Clooney clocked him soon as yeah, he yeah, yeah. Cause y'all yeah. too cool. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, dog, I just fought for my like, life. My brother here. dead, her whole hey, family gone. I done lost everybody. You yeah. cool as hell. So yeah. yeah, I give this movie a three quarters cut, man. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So who who's next up? You I'll know? go. Yeah. Um well the plot and all the action scenes was taken care of Mugu. Uh taken care of by Mugu. I'll just first off I mean, like I said, this was Quentin Tarantino's first paid writing mm -hmm. credit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was George Clooney's first major Hollywood role. Mm. Uh, a young George Clooney. Smooth face. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, like, I can understand why he was casted in this movie. Like, he has the typical Hollywood look. Mm -hmm. Juliet Lewis was was casted ba uh, like strictly on being friends with Quentin Tarantino. Okay. Uh, it was a it good is. thing because, like, you know, that's not the, like, a lot, it goes to the fact of it's not what you know, it's who you know type thing. Mm -hmm. Now, later, Juliette Lewis, like, really, like, sells herself on her own in her later in her later movies. Mm -hmm. Like she deserved everything that she was in. Like, and that's how she broke through. Her and Quentin Tarantino were friends before this movie. And, you know, uh Tarantino said, like, hey man, I think my friend is good for this. Um and um yeah, like there is nothing else I need to say except I'm gonna say. I forgot what uh, movie we reviewed that I um, that T. Roy actually explained that Quentin Tarantino has a foot fetish. Uh, so we was talking about Death Proof. Yeah. Death. Oh Death yeah, Proof. that's right. Death yeah. Proof. Yeah. That was Shanita's pick. And we brought up. Uh, oh man. Kill okay. Bill too. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I said that I was gonna watch like those movies y'all said. Mm -hmm. This movie actually exemplified. Man, it was feet all over this movie. <laughs> and the thing about it, I'm thinking about like opening myself and letting myself go to a foot fetish like after watching this movie, especially Selma Hayek's part. Her character is based on, actually, her name is based on a horror flick. Um, a, I forgot what her name was, but her- Satanical Pandemonium. Yup, 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 yup. Big fuck you. <laughs> yes. But her name is based on a horror flick. But her acting and uh, it was... N uh, I don't think it was her uh, first role. Okay. But she played this role so much that I... Like, I told uh, T. Roy and Mugu, like, after this part, uh, going off of Quentin Tarantino's foot fetish, it had already been, like, up to Selma Hayek's part, it had already been uh, a f a major focus on feet <laughs> up to this part. But this time, when Selma Hayek was doing her dance, she put her feet in Quentin Tarantino's mouth. And if you look at Quentin Tarantino, like, oh, yeah, there. this was acting. But if you look at him real good... Like he was enjoying it. Like this was like this was just a bonus. <laughs> yeah, for him. He was really enjoying it. This was just a bonus. He got fifteen hundred dollars for writing this movie. But I think he felt like a millionaire when <laughs> Selma Hyde's foot was in her mouth and then she poured tequila down her body. Down her it went down her leg. Over her kneecap. Pretty ass kneecaps. <laughs> down her shin. No, first down her femur. Then it hit the <laughs> femur. Then it hit her ankles, and then it hit her toes. And the it like the tequila went into Quentin Tarantino's mouth, and I think I felt the joy that Quentin Tarantino did. I'm thinking of having a foot fetish myself. I have to research and make sure it's safe. Make sure you can't do no STDs out of this. But I had, after this move, after this, I had paused it. Switched over to Pornhub, caught me one, and then came back. <laughs> hey, man, it's booze and reviews. Y'all my friends. Fuck it. <laughs> caught me one, 
And then I came back. But uh, Selma Hayek was, <clears throat> and her dancing was seductive, brilliant, smart. It was, it was like not slutty, but freaky enough to where like, where are you at right now? I will turn into Quentin Tarantino's character, and like you know, like Mu said, like he was, he had a. Like he had an issue with sex. He was a sex offender. We'll just put it like yeah, that. He was. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was a sex offender in this. And it was like, like I had already seen La Bamba at this point. So Elizabeth Pena had already got me for Mexicans. So, but this one, but Selma Hayek in this one was like, a, like had me thinking like, maybe I should have born, maybe I should either move to Mexico or I don't think I was supposed to be born an African American. I'm supposed to be born a Mexican because they get down, son. <laughs> they get down. But uh, I give this movie a full cup. Uh, basically, because these were Juliette Lewis, George Clooney, Quentin Tarantino, Cheech Marin, mm -hmm. Machete, uh, who is Danny what's her name? Danny Trejo. Mm -hmm. um, did I say Juliette Lewis already? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This. These were all like struggling, act, starving actors at the point. Quentin Tarantino was a starving writer at the point, and this set it off. Mm -hmm. He kept with the, he kept with. Not only did he keep with the major, how do you kill vampires? What's the, like mm -hmm. once they realized what they was going through, yeah. he kept with the general, how do you kill vampires? Mm -hmm. uh, all of that thing. Um, he kept with the holy water. The holy water, yeah. the making of the crosses, mm -hmm. the uh, sunlight, so all of that water stuff. Balloons. Water balloons, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, yeah. everything. It was, it was, it was, it was something that, like you know, I can't say that that it was a original. I would say it was a Quentin Tarantino writing. Mm -hmm. It was enjoying. It was, it was uh, like they had all the things for me. I'm freaked out. You had Salma Hyatt. You had Juliet Luke. Number one, you had uh, Quentin Tarantino's foot fetish on here, which, right, I finally saw for the first time with my own eyes. And I think I might have a foot fetish now just because they portrayed it in a good way to where I don't think it's bad to have a foot fetish. <laughs> and <laughs> and, it's all, man. and then, man, man, and then there was a part to where Quentin um mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino was daydreaming about Juliette Lewis, and she said, "Would you like to eat my pussy?" And in the daydream, huh? yeah, 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 right. yeah, in the daydream. And then, like ten minutes later, it was a part where they trying to get to Mexico, and Quentin, Tarant uh, Quentin Tarantino's character addressed it. It was a funny part. Mm -hmm. it, it was you got you. It was a Quentin Tarantino movie, and it was his first writing credit. I think he did good. Full cup for me, um, mm -hmm. strictly because of the the dynamics of everybody that was in it, the writing, the uh, cinema photography, like how the the only thing I would say bad about the cinema photography out is when the vampires died and when they changed. It was I would like to know the special budget effects. of yeah special effects. I would like to know mm -hmm. the budget of this film. That's the only thing mm -hmm. that I could have so said I, that, you know. I gotta look that up. So I could hit you with, so 19 to 20 million. Mm. Okay. What it, was the budget? It was the budget. Okay. Right? They made 59. Mm. That's okay. why I was saying Box there was office. a big okay. disparity. Yeah. What they put into it versus what they getting out of it. Okay. And that's a worldwide. Yeah. That's not just the U.S. Okay. They did well in the U.S., but they did better worldwide. Mm, okay. So, you know what's interesting about that, y'all? Mm -hmm. Speaking about the special effects with the vampires, the Sex Machine character is played by Tom Savini. Okay. Mm. He's a well-known special effects dude. He uh, did the first Friday the 13th movie. No, I did not know. Dawn so, of the Dead. So, um, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. He's, he's, a, he's like top-notch. Yeah. And he, okay, and he acted. Yeah, he's sex. Mm -hmm. He's a sex machine character. Okay, yeah, or a cock blaster, as you would call it. <laughs> yeah. But oh, but he's a legend. So like, did he's he like do a, special I, That's what I got to research. I got to okay. take a look at that because okay. I don't know. Um, Greg Nicotero, I think he has something to do with it. He's the guy that 
Dead. Who works on um uh, Walking Dead? Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. my man. I didn't. I know think that. he has. Some, he actually has a cameo in the movie. Um, oh, Greg he? Nicotero. A very small cameo okay. with Sex Machine is uh. Remember, he got the little whip and he grabbed the guy's beard. Oh, that's, 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 Greg I think that's Greg Nicotero. That's Greg Nicotero. Yeah, and yeah. then he pulled out a blade. Yeah. After, and then after the Sex him. Machine took his yeah. brew, I think that's Greg he Nicotero. pulled out a blade and Sex Machine like, was like, hey, you don't this problems, got. bro. Right. And he was like, he put his blade I got the like, cock knife. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So, dude. yeah, I think that's Greg Nicotero. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got to check and see if that was if Tom Savini. I wish he would have done the um the special effects. I mean at this point, the way that they did it, it was it was balanced. Like all of them look like they died the same. Mm-hmm. Although the makeup on some of them was a little different a little shaky. here yeah. and there. Yeah. But I mean, you got the gist of it. Yeah. Okay. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I still give it a full cup. This is uh just for the all-around aspect. I'm not putting it on one or two mm-hmm. certain things. Mm-hmm. It was just, first off, it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Number two, it was a funny movie. Number three, it was, for a horror movie, it was funny. And for a comedy, it was horrifying. And <laughs> <laughs> so whatever which way you want to call it. Because it was just as many scary parts in it as it was funny parts. Yeah, yeah. George Clooney played his ass off. He did. That was his first uh, role in Hollywood. And uh, he did it. He did it. He sold me on, he sold me on the movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I give it a full cut. I give it a full cut. I think at the, I think and then and with the success of this, mm-hmm. now I didn't watch any of the others spinoffs, mm-hmm. the sequels, but they did have sequels to this. They went right, to two three. And three. Yeah, they went to two and three, yeah. which basically puts it in the. Uh, so I don't know if you say three or four, but that put it in the uh, spectrum of a franchise. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that first movie doing so well, I think that's why they went on to the other. Yeah, and I didn't see pulled, two and three. And they T. pulled Roy in said, different actors. Yeah, they pulled in different actors. Yeah. T. Roy said he saw two. I saw two. But it was it didn't um it didn't make him want to see three. Exactly. Uh, I, Mugu, you seen two and three? I have not seen Me either. Of those. That's Me either. I didn't even know until today. But the success of that movie is what forced the mother to. And you can get mad at that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you got a full cut for me, T. Roy. What y'all got? Oh, uh, man, this was a hell of a pick by Mogul. Um, this is one of my favorite vampire movies. I, I will say this is my second vampire, say, second favorite vampire movie. Um, my, I always tell them, like, my first uh, vampire movies are The Lost Boys and Fright Night. <laughs> them are my two number ones. I can't pick between my two kids. So. Me either, shit. Uh, this is my second. <laughs> yeah. uh, George Clooney, um, his character, Seth Gecko, I think he was like one of my favorite, like, kind of anti heroes. Mm-hmm. He was cool. He kind of mm-hmm. owned every scene that he was in. He, he always had something funny. Uh, he used the F word the probably movie. more times than Scarface. Yeah. Or just about as many times as Scarface. Um, Quentin Tarantino's character was cool. Um, the acting was, was, was pretty dope. And I, I like the idea that. Uh, the movie starts off as like a, uh, it has the feeling of like a Reservoir Dogs or a Pulp Fiction. Mm. You cannot mm. tell that it's going to be a horror movie in the mm. beginning. No. Until no. they get no. to that bar and they, that door gets shut. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, damn, like, okay, this is whole, you know, this is something else. And that's totally like what kind of drew me in with the movie. Um, special effects was decent. Um, I, I, I will have to do some research to see if Tom Savini how much involvement he might have had with the special effects um, next to Greg Nicotero. Mm-hmm. Um, that Sama Hayek scene with the with the snake and the, the oh. hands, oh very memorable. God. Oh, yeah. Oh uh, I was a teenager at the time, so, yeah. you, know, you know, it is what it is. Yep. Just them bringing her out. Yeah, brought her out. Um, yeah, I'm going to give this movie, I give this movie a full cup. It was a fun ride. Um, you got to take it for what it is. Um, after you get past the elements of, you know, that surprise element of it being a crime story turning into an action horror movie. Man, yeah, um, that's a lot of different changes. Yeah, it was it, it was dope. Um, Cheech Marin, memorable for- performances with uh, 
who was it? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Chet Pussy. <laughs> uh, he was the uh, the the guard at the uh, at the border. Yup. And the Carlos character. Mm. Um, that was pretty cool for me. He owned every scene that he had. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna give this movie a full cup. A uh, hell of a pick by Mugu. And um, mm. as far as the sequels, I saw the second one. Um, I remember seeing it, it came on the Sci Fi Channel, and I watched it, and I was like, "Ah, oh, it's cool." It's not the first one. You definitely notice. Uh, you miss the George Clooney character, the Seth Gecko character, and uh, the Juliet uh, Lewis character. Mm -hmm. The third movie, I didn't even give it a chance because after I saw the second one, I was like, "Nah, I'm straight." I, don't, I think that one was like kind of straight to DVD. So uh, yeah, so and that's kind of hard for. All like sequels, man. Like yeah. you know, when your first movie is the bomb, is I can't hold that against them. Your second, like you already behind the eight ball if you're trying to make a sequel to a mm -hmm. good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like when the so at the end of the movie when it's actually going, you know, where it's panning out. Okay. So mm -hmm. you see that. Mm. So you see that the uh, bar is sitting on top. But it's the top of like a Mayan pyramid. Yeah, right. yeah Aztecs right. or something. Right? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so and then like basically this is the resting place for all of these other vampires. Mm -hmm. So they basically got out of there alive, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but there are other vampires. And I think that was their main thing for pushing for these other movies. Mm -hmm. Because now, hey, just because this happened at this time, we coming back. And some other people are gonna come to the same bar, and I yeah. don't even know if. So did they use that bar in two? So, or um, two did the T Twister was in part two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and it, it's actually two is a prequel to the first movie. Oh, um, okay. That's why the Danny Trejo okay, character so is actually in that, scene. In that yeah, one because okay. he, you know, he died from Dust of Dawn. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the third movie, from what I read, is actually based on like. It's like an origin story, pretty much, of like oh, those okay. vampires. Okay, so even with that, that's kind of like where it just lays down the, uh, the format the for, yeah, okay. for to okay. do another movie. Because I feel like, okay, so you saying that these vampires basically go back to the Mayan, that Mayan age and that this thing is sitting on top of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah. That's, mm. yeah. And, that, and they get explored a lot more. Um, some I can recommend if y'all ever get to watch the, uh, the TV show it might be, I'm not sure what streaming service it's on, but wow. I think I might have watched it on Netflix. The From Dust Till Dawn uh, TV show. I think it's wow. three seasons. It was a pretty decent show. Mm. Um, it's like a retelling of the movie, and it goes on forward of the events after the movie. It just, it's kind of a retelling. Wow. Um, the characters are uh, different and portrayed different, but I thought it was a decent show. I watched it all the way up until the end. Wow. So, mm -hmm. I definitely would recommend that. I didn't even know that they, it had a series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was decent. Wow. It was decent. It says that the uh, at the ending is not a Mayan temple. It's an Aztec. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. Aztec temple. Okay. Which brings me back to, I forgot when I, when I came back, it was an Aztec pyramid. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was an Aztec instead of the Mayans and, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Okay. It was just that, and there's a lot of symbolism and a lot of history behind that, and uh, I thought that I thought that was dope too. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, hell of a pick, Bad Mogul. I didn't think he was gonna pick this because horror is really not on his uh, satellite. Not, yeah, it ain't you know no what I'm either. saying? Like but, we really asked him to stretch it, this time. <laughs> and he stretched it. He but stretched. You know he came what? up with a good one. My original pick possibly would have still played well. What was that? Who? What oh, you're right? watching. It might mm -hmm. come back up. Check us out. Oh, we'll come so back definitely up. make sure you see the. Uh, make sure you check us out. Um, check us out on Booze and Reviews YouTube. Facebook. You can see, see all the new uh, reviews we got up and the ones we've done in the past and up to now. You can mm -hmm. see all the new stuff. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, man. And then after you subscribe, what you do, Mugu? Subscribe again. Subscribe, <laughs> motherfucker. And hit the goddamn notification. <laughs> hit the goddamn button. Turn Just them do on. it. <laughs> Turn them on. And that way you know when we dropping the new stuff. Mm. You get all the hot new uh, reviews. No doubt. And if it's stuff y'all ain't seen before, we here to let y'all know. Y'all better watch it. it. Go for it. Hey, and make sure y'all comment and leave suggestions for, you know, for our people's poll. We do people's poll picks, you know, um, 
definitely to let us know we there's some movies out there we might not have seen or that we need to review again because we might have seen something else in it that you know we didn't see the first time. Yeah. So y'all got any favorite parts of the movie? Like you know, before we sign off, like, I know I told you my favorite part. My favorite part stands was, out. Yeah, my favorite part was Selma Hayek's dance. Yeah, they did her justice by actually having uh 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 a uh that calmed the crowd down, gave her an introduction, and after she got done, I don't think ever like people recognized it, but George Clooney's part when she. After she was done, and he leaned back and was like, now that's what I call a fucking show. <laughs> that was ad-lib, and they kept it in the movie. Oh, wow. That was ad-lib. Right yeah, was. yeah. Very much was. And they kept it in the movie. And that was George Clooney, like, like I think that was boss because he wasn't the George Clooney that we know of now. Like, he's oh, a boss right now. Like, whatever he says goes. Yeah. But I, But I think it was boss because I think George Clooney knew where he was going. Yeah. And, he, and that needed to be said. I think it needed to be said. That was Selma Hyatt. And she put her fucking toes. And the tequila ran down everything like her butt. Like, like, Lord have mercy. Selma Hyatt was like 20, 20 something. <laughs> and it ran down so smooth. Like, I know they cut, I know they cut it and made it like, like for movie sake, but. So we'll cut and do it again. Yeah, right. and it, it ran down. had no problem with it. It ran down her breast. You probably face. asked her that. That's so oh. hard. Oh, man, I, mean, I wasn't feeling it. Let's I believe it. he gave back some he money. He was like, I want to play that character. Yes. <laughs> I believe Quentin Tarantino. her feet in my mouth. Yes. I believe Quentin Tarantino gave back some of the $1,500 that they paid him <laughs> to write this movie. And was like, you know what? I would have did this shit for free. For I would have too. I would have <laughs> too. And, I, and like, yeah, that was my favorite part. She, she set the whole shit off right there. That was my favorite part. What you got? I would say possibly the scenes where um, the where they were in the, in the midst of the fighting, mm -hmm. you know, uh, probably right before the end of the movie, which is the Harvey Cartel is getting ready to change, oh, mm -hmm. but he's still out there helping them before he changes. Before he changes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, he got the little cross with the shotgun and the, and the stick, and he using it to. You know, kill and you know that, yeah. that probably that more inter that that part where the interaction was happening. That was okay, a makeshift cross that yeah. was also a shotgun. Shotgun, mm. yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That was probably yeah. That was mm. probably right. okay. Um, I think my scene would be I, I would say the beginning uh, when they was in the liquor store. Um, mm. Son of a bitch. When uh, <laughs> fuck me again. I they they kind of lied and uh, Richie kind of lied. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's character lied. And said that the guy that was on the liquor store mm -hmm. was trying to whisper to the sheriff. Mm -hmm. And the sheriff is played by Michael Park uh Michael Parks. Uh mm -hmm. his name was Earl McGraw. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned him in uh uh Death Proof. We talked about him in Death Proof. He appears in Death Proof, but he also appeared in From Dust Till Dawn. Mm -hmm. wow. And um I think uh Kill Bill, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, he did. He was yep. He kinda yeah, like man. an Easter egg in the in and he's uh, kind of the, the same position he's the as a police, police officer. Yeah, Damn. The sheriff, yeah. Yep. Um, but I, I thought that scene was cool. It kind of set the tone. And you kind of know that you was in for like a roller coaster of a movie. Mm -hmm. um, that it was kind of comedic. It kind of ended messed up, but it was like kind of funny that the guy, even though he he never was uh, trying to mouth off to the sheriff that they was no, know, he I, really was. He was telling the truth. He, he put was up a good front. The truth. And uh, Quentin Tarantino's character Richie was just lying. Like he up front was lying. Like I told you, he was trying yeah. to mouth off. But yeah, he was one of those gung ho. Like he was just gung ho. He was crazy and a yeah. sex offender, yeah. but with just gung ho. He just wanted to kill bitches. Yeah, man. He I loved it. it. And rape. I love yeah, it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wanted to rape bitches. I'm not with that. No, not at all. I'm not with that. He it just, was but you know, it was, it was his moment. character. It was his and yeah, Troy. Yeah, he gave. Yeah, yeah. That was a big fuck you. Yeah, that was a good. That was because good while I was watching this movie, I actually text T Roy. And said, I forgot all about the liquor store scene. And he said, I, saw, I think he said something about it. Take, I'll take care of this off camera. <laughs> but I think he said something about it before I did. Because I was going to say something about it. But yeah, that was a favorite scene too. And another one of my favorite scenes was, who was that that talked about the border crossing when Cheech came on the uh, RV? 
One of y'all that said that. It was, but was Mook was talking uh, yeah, about. Yeah, it was between. Yep. It was, was running well, down. They yep. were in the bathroom. George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino yep. mm -hmm. were in the bathroom with Julia Lewis. Yeah, and Quentin Tarantino he had went off about George, uh, uh, Seth, like insinuating that he was a nut. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> but they tried to get across the border, and and uh, Quentin Tarantino's carriage is like really fuck this shit. You know right. that was. Some of, mental, mental, yeah, some of his mental, that was some of his mental shit. So he knocked him out, and then when 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 a uh, Cheech's border uh, crossing character heard that he came aboard, mm -hmm. and when he came into the bathroom, they asked uh, George uh, Seth had set uh, his brother's uh, character up to where you know he's holding him up. Well, basically, they're out of sight, and Juliet Lewis's character is on the toilet. And when Cheech's character comes in there, it's just her and her panties. It's like right around her knees, and she was like, "Okay, can you close the door? It's just me." Yeah. Cheech is closing the, the uh, door, and he's still looking like perved out. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, was he was perved out, out. Yeah. and. I just went to write, like, right there, I went to Natural Born Killers. I was like, if that was the Juliet Lewis from Natural Born Killers, he would be dead. Exactly. Yeah, she'd kill and, him. And, yeah, and, face and that just, like, blew me away. That was one of my favorite parts, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that in okay. there. But, yeah, man. But, so what was your pick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you had Yeah, I ran mine, yeah. yeah. No, so that was... So yeah, yeah, it was a, it was definitely a good movie, and it started off like I said, it started off a franchise, but don't know how well the other two did, and I don't think they did as well. No, because I didn't the hear first about. One, it. I didn't hear about. Yeah, it. the first one did. I mean, we talking about twenty five, thirty million, mm -hmm. and based off of what they spent to make it. Yeah. So that's a big deal. Yeah, All right, so there you go. Know. I gave it a full cup. T Roy yeah. gave it a definitely got a full, full cup. Okay, that's all y'all for me. Mugu gave it a. Three quarters. Three quarters. quarters. Yep. So yeah, this is another episode, y'all, and uh, we appreciate y'all for joining us, and uh, we'll see y'all next time.